we weren't sure if y'all really wanted to hear us talk about our gardens or not last week, so we took a little break. Now we just had a a subject we wanted to get out to you about planting a summer garden, but this week you're in luck because we're going to talk about what's going on in our gardens, and I got a sneaking suspicion there's a lot going on. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. And this podcast is a companion podcast to the upcoming documentary, Backyard Gardens, a documentary about two families growing food for the first time in a world that lacks nutrition. Is the suspicion right? It is. It is. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. It is. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot going on in my garden, too. So what's up with yours? Oh, I didn't even realize that was real, real. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was for, that was for real. This is for real. <laughs> this is you know real what? life. Yeah, we are really recording a podcast right now. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I wish you would have told me. Um, oh, and by the way, it has got video. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. There will be clips and audio and everything. So I think we've got everything going smooth now. We are preparing to allow you to overdose on us like that's the intention right (laughs) (laughs) i'm overdosed yeah yeah right i'm just like you know what with uh, the setup now i can like see uh, a little bit of your face and i'm like ah this feels better yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i i'm so happy that we're doing this episode today because i can truthfully and honestly tell the people that out of the 828 beds that I have, I have planted 13 of them. So that's 13. And the crowd goes kind of wild. Yeah, that's 13 out of 14 total in all seriousness. So I have one single bed that um, I'd say that's left to plant my summer plantings. Um, And... Also, very importantly, I am like 80% done with my flower plants, too. So, yeah. You know what? I'm not even done with my flowers yet. Yeah. Everything that I need to plant in the ground, I actually burned a couple of days planting my some additional perennials. Um, And I have some containers still to go, but that's a whole nother story. Because I can just, you know, do that on my lunch and, you know. Containers are a little quick, though. Yeah. You know, uh, kind of. I mean, kind when I'm of. looking for perfection in the design, not so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, it's funny you speak of flowers. I just, um, I, re- I just recorded a video. I still have to cut it, but um, it's about uh, propagating petunias mm, because oh. I keep. I know, I know, I knew you were gonna oh. like it, oh. so it's gonna be coming out. Actually, by the time this airs, it should be out, but um. I, I did it. I propagated some. Okay. And okay. Um, I, I do a lot of pro- propagation, mm-hmm. which is basically taking a cutting and making a whole nother plant. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought of you. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this for Batavia. Oh, so. uh, that's super sweet. I actually just bought a shit ton of petunia seeds because I couldn't find them like up until June. So looking at seeds all through like late last year, Uh, Coming into the spring, you know, I have a million and one different flower seeds, but I couldn't. The only ones I found were the super big packs and it was like 12 bucks or something. Maybe not 12 bucks, like eight bucks or something. I'm just like. I hear they're hard to start by seed too. Yeah, we'll find out. So I have a bunch. Listen, don't don't put the curse of the kale, cabbage and collard greens on me for the petunias. (laughs) No, I was just listening to it. Uh, I wasn't listening. I was reading the other day because, you know, I've been doing a lot of research about what flowers are easier to start by Mm -hmm. seed. Mm -hmm. And petunias, I believe, was not one of them. And I was surprised because they're everywhere. Yeah. 
Petunia's and that could like, be a reason why too though because i thought to myself yeah. well if i have to make room in my garden budget for purchasing flowers then the petunias are going to be the ones that i would like to do that for you know this is my tinfoil hat because i haven't made one yet oh but. okay i thought that was the sit up straight hat <laughs> no no batavia's she's going down a dark path she so what she's really saying is they've mm-hmm. bred petunias so they do not seed well mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. if that's what she's saying but in some magic closet or garage somewhere um there's probably a whole like group of people that only do that um so yeah oh so i guess i should also say because i have been talking about the potential of like buying no plants and then i realize and i'm just being general when i say plants then i realize that buying flowers makes me happy um and so i Let's see, a weekend or two ago, I did two things. I started buying a few vegetables because, you know, I mean, the drinking game for me could be kale, collards, and cabbage. So I just said, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. I know that I can successfully grow um, like Russian kale and um, there are a couple of other um, like um, dinosaur or kale. I can grow that from seed. I've been successful in that over the last couple of years. It's the curly kale and direct sowing that I should say. It's the curly kale that I was trying to grow indoors that just failed. So anywho, I went out to say, okay, I'm just going to buy the plants. So I didn't find any kale, curly kale, traditional curly kale plants, starter plants, but I did find collards and cabbage. So uh, that's a part of the garden bed that I've planted. I've surrendered, you know. (laughs) Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I um yeah. I think my beds are totally switched out for summer at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think every time I say that, I think back in my head and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But see, we just got four inches of rain in two days, three days, it's and dangerous. my carrots. I'm a little worried that they may have split. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, too much water, um, too much uh, rain will do that for them, right? Right. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm eat the shit out of them if they split. I don't even care. I'll just cut I, them in um, half and make it act like it never happened. I thought about you when I was, I sowed carrot seeds this morning and I literally was sowing them like third year's the term. Like this is it. Yeah. This is going to be it. Cause I've never been able to successfully grow carrots. Now I definitely so, have carrots. I yeah, dug okay. around and I saw a carrot. So I okay. know that I have carrots, but, um, okay. and my parsnip seeds that you gave me, mm-hmm. they're coming uh, up. Oh, they are? Okay, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, I was trying to think good. of the this brand is good. that is. Okay. This is good. Well, that's so the know. part where I can't see, you know, so I'm like, is he giving me the finger? Like, which could be possible oh, oh. given the parsnip seeds and all. <laughs> no, 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 no. So they're coming up. So that's good. Well, good. Because I've never grown parsnips. Never oh, grown. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, okay. I think for mine, I'm trying to be very um, obedient with the recommendations for you're in this area in the United States. A bunch of the seeds have the, the map on the back and when you should plant them. And I think, I know, I know, but anytime I've gone against it, I've not had luck. So I think my parsnips, I want to say it's either July or August that they're suggesting they plant, be planted in my area. Um, Yeah. No, that seems really late. Yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong. Let's just say that they stayed on the table indoors because I couldn't plant them in June. It could be a, I miss the window because there are a couple of them where it's like, all right, put you up until next year. They take a long time to grow. Mm -hmm. So you might want to stick them in the ground. Yeah, I'll take a look. I may have missed the window where it may have ended in May. Um, Now the question is, so look, there's there's an elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to do a square foot garden off. I thought about that as well. Are we even close to doing anything like this? Because at this point, like... I'm struggling to stick to square. I mean, I'm not, I'm struggling to stick to my personal definition of square foot garden, Mm -hmm. but not the definition of it. So um, if you're forfeiting, I understand. Like I, so this is, um, I don't know. It's not any like to die. So I'll just share it. I actually used and almost all of the beds besides the round ones. I put the grid out like, all of the beds besides the round ones. So that makes like really? 11 beds. I used the string. I went the whole nine yards, the string and 
Um, there's some beds that just the measurements are slightly off. So it may be like 13 inches versus a, a square foot or whatever. Um, but Damn, yeah, so really? my grids are all there and I'm planting in them. I did do a couple of things like um, like for broccoli. I have some early broccoli and I did like, you know, one and a half foot of space, you know, because I mean, I, I have the space. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I say that to say pick a bed, man, any bed. And I'll challenge you with that bed. I'm sticking to the same bed. Okay. No, I'm but saying pick just... any bed for my from my garden. You can choose no, that's a bed. You. Yeah. That's you. Oh, mm. so now we're getting cocky. Yeah, just a little bit. This, <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what though? The only trouble is I don't have a ton of variety. And this is and and maybe I'll change, maybe I won't, but I am a big fan of planting a bunch of the same thing in the beds. Um, so for instance, one of the bed, the last bed I planted today has collards, transplants, obviously cabbage, and I did onions in them and that's it. You know, so most of my beds have, hmm? Oh, go ahead. I was, I was going to interrupt you, but most of my beds have, um, like three veggies in them, but really not more, but they're all the same veggies, like so, so if all you have peppers, a, they may be different varieties of peppers, but you know, that row has all peppers in it as an example. Right. Okay. So that's a good thing that you brought up. Um, mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is, do you think you should spread? Because I mean, you have multiple beds. Mm-hmm. So do you think you should spread out your beds all over or your each individual, like put a pepper in this bed and peppers in this bed and peppers in that bed, or do you think you should keep them clumped together? What, do you, what is your opinion? Um, I actually probably have, remember, I had more pepper plants than I had tomato plants. So I don't, I'm not sure how that's possible. And I'll have to figure that out because I, I mean, I still have a bunch of pepper plants. But anywho, um, for my style, I like to put things in the same beds or close like if I have two beds right next to each other I'll put I want to put my peppers in those two beds unless I'm doing an experiment like in ground and um, you know on the concrete patio and the reason why I like to be able to do that is because it helps me keep track of them right so I don't have to go and check on the peppers in bed one that's in the front yard and check on the peppers in bed 12 in the backyard technically I'm doing that because I have so many peppers but you know um, when I had a smaller space yeah it was the same thing I'm not doing like a single pepper in beds by design. Well, the reason why I'm asking is, do you think there's an appropriate way to do it? Um, I've read that mm, appropriate. Sure. I'll go with that word. I've read that um, you can confuse some pest by creating like diversity in your beds. Um, So perhaps, especially for a smaller garden, a more appropriate thing to do would be to um mix in some different vegetables that's my final answer what about when it comes to crop rotation though you know this is like the bane of my existence i saw a video um like (laughs) yesterday or the day before that it was a gardener that i trust as a gardener not one i know personally and he um plants tomato plants in the same space year over year he creates this big construction of tomato cages and um he commented on people asking him about crop rotation and disease and such so he described it as he basically um digs up the kind of plant hole so wherever that tomato plant was he replaces that dirt every year um and so he's basically looking at it like he's rotating the dirt um now yeah no (laughs) now um (laughs) If there's disease, that's a little bit of a different situation. Um, But I'm going to stand by. I've grown tomatoes in the same spot for probably six or eight years. And I've had trouble with one or two plants, you know, every other season or something. So, I mean, I just, I, 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 I pause anytime we talk about crop rotation just because unless you're growing very few vegetables, it's hard to do that for a small garden. You know, so we talked about this, how you're one of your beds, like just planting a tomato plant on one end versus the other really isn't crop rotation. Right. You know, so you really want that to be I think you want that to be true to form in a whole different bed. 
Um, so that's my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I'm a firm believer in crop rotation. Mm-hmm. I believe in it. I think it's like, what does it hurt? And obviously mm-hmm. the gentleman you are watching is too. He just replaces the dirt. So it's kind of the same thing. You know what I mean? But part of it too is, I mean, for me, I like doing it because I get to watch, I get, it makes me think about like really think about where things are placed throughout the garden. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But no, it's much easier for me not to, if I never, if I didn't have to rotate crops, I would never do it. And I, I'm still torn between the only thing I'm very, I'm watching very carefully are like the collards and that, that family of vegetables. I don't, I just don't, I've read and heard about kind of horror stories about, you know, fungus setting in and, and essentially you're replacing all of the dirt because it's ver- very hard to get rid of once it sets in so it would have been a lot yep. easier i cleared the the bed that had my collars and cabbage in it last year i cleared it a couple of weeks ago it would have been much easier for me just to plant them right back there because they did phenomenally well there um but i moved them to an entirely different bed the part that's not the issue for me it's year two and year three so i literally was planting the transplants today and saying gosh now okay so i think i can go into this other bed next year right you know so trying to keep track of that i know there are all kinds of cool um graphics and images that have like the circles saying year one year two year three year four yeah but my garden isn't exactly set up in that way you know and that's that's totally fine mm-hmm. i mean i think it's just i th- I think really the safe thing to view is if you don't want to rotate but one year you know that there's really issues mm-hmm, mm-hmm with a plant, then I think it's, then it's time to say, you know what, next year I'm going to plant it somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And see what happens. So yeah, I didn't want to go on a crop rotation tangent or anything. I was just kind of curious what she thought. Well, one more comment on that though, too, because I am also, yeah, no. So my garden space is spread out, right? And it's different conditions, not just sun, but different conditions, um, based on the space, right? You know, so I'm always trying to figure out what grows well with only 12 inches uh, or 10 inches of soil, which is what's generally on my concrete patio in those beds versus what has an endless supply of soil that's, you know, in the, you know, raised beds in ground, right? So that's another, like I have 14 beds. Let's just be realistic. I can easily rotate things, but I don't want to try to grow a tomato plant on my concrete patio, you know, within 10 inches of dirt, you know? So that's, that starts to limit me. So I started to think about, you know, veggies that have really big roots, which I thought collars would be, uh, maybe not so much, but again, they kicked ass last year. So I'm hoping for the same because it's the same kind of concrete patio that they're sitting on. So, you know, it's funny. I was just, um, reading something the other day and if your um dirt's acidic Mm -hmm. you add lime right Mm -hmm. well what's in concrete oh oh huh cha-ching if you're not watching the video take a timestamp. go to youtube and check her out (laughs) it just clicked you could see the light bulb go off yeah 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 should have planted the blueberries in the concrete patio. Yeah, because have you ever done a soil test? I haven't, but yeah. that's wild. That's where's my hat. I don't want to mess up my hair, though. Um, I, oh my gosh, I ch- talked with so many people this weekend, right? So um, one of the folks, all right, let's do so I needed to pick me up going into the weekend. And so I decided to kind of transition into planting flowers. That's how I ended up with the, you know, I'm focusing on the perennial flower bed that's street side. Um, and a part of that brings me to the front yard, right? Versus kind of being locked away in the backyard garden. And um, it takes me three or four times as long to get the work done because there are always people stopping, they're walking by, people that are literally, I've said this before, will stop their cars, sometimes chat with me just for a second, you know, kind of double parked, if you will, but other times they'll pull over. And so um, I met a woman that lives behind me um, and she said, my daughter and I um, 
wanted to come and ring your bell because she's interested in gardening and you know we'd love if you're able to kind of show her a couple of things she's like the mom is like you know I bought her a couple of books and I'm like you know you might as well just knock me over from the milk crate that I'm Mm -hmm. sitting on I'm like absolutely um but that's a story the other, other story I'll share is um, a mother and daughter duo pulled over and commented. Um, and it's so funny because I was at like the end of my, where do I put this plant that I probably shouldn't have bought? Cause this right. is a perennial, this is a flower. And I'm just like, Ugh, where can I put it? Um, and I have this whole thing where there's literally concrete spots under my flower bed. And so I started digging like, this is the perfect spot that I'm like, Oh, you know, that's not gold I've hit. I've not struck oil. That's concrete. Right. So anyway, I was sitting on the uh, the milk crate and I probably looked down and they s- kind of slowed down and they asked me what I was planting. So anyway, like 40 minutes later, because <laughs> I get out and I show them uh, the things that I was planting. They were just giving away like extra transplants because clearly everyone started too many. Um, and they asked me about soil testing and I was telling them about the extension for Illinois. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's where I've read before you can send your soil in for testing. And they asked the same question. Have you ever had your soil tested? And I said, no, you know, the only trouble that I think I've had with, um, the soil obviously is the blueberry plants. Um, yeah. so. well, it's, it's funny cause you, you know, a lot of garden centers will do a soil test for you. Oh, really? And I'm not sure. Cause you know, they say those home kits don't work. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's what I've, I've always heard that. Yeah, but then I'm too. thinking if you, if you go to the garden center, they're probably using the same thing. When you right? said it, I like, thought, well, yeah, they probably have. They open a, t- yeah. a kit or two. Yeah. Are those so, reusable, though? Are you? Or is it like know. one kit per? Because usually the garden center does it for free. Okay. Okay. So, and I mean, all the ones that I've been to, and I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten it done here because my house is literally in a patch of woods Mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by pine trees. So I guarantee you it's acidic. Okay. So I'm sorry, just to clarify, why would you get your soil tested versus your dirt? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Good one. Good one. She (laughs) called me out. Yeah. No, it's, um, I've never done it here. And I just, I don't think that might need to get my dirt tested um i haven't had any real issues but we'll see you know what i mean i think there's a lot other things to worry about like you know amending your soil and Mm -hmm. adding compost and all that stuff and and whatnot but like i did the raised beds on a a portion of my garden so that was controlled yeah yeah you know what i mean like the, the stuff that i bought the ph was optimum for gardening pleasure so <laughs> okay um yeah so i have a bunch of stuff so i feel like either you need to start piping in with some updates otherwise this is going to be the batavia show um, okay you because, want me to talk about what i've done well, you know what we were supposed to do an up was it last week we were supposed to do an update and we, yeah. we changed gears okay so yeah, i've been saving it. some of this stuff yeah okay yeah we canceled it yeah no i've just been i've been um i put on instagram the other day a picture of a spot and i was like vegetables or flowers you decide and mm-hmm. all the people decided, and I got 75% flowers, 25% uh, vegetables, which inter- interestingly enough, all the men voted for vegetables and mm-hmm. all the women voted for flowers. And I'm here to tell you, men, you can grow flowers. It's okay. The manliest men I've ever met in my life all grew flowers. So You I know what, though? I voted like eight times, ground. so I may have skewed your numbers. <laughs> Actually, you didn't vote at all. I did vote. I know, I know. Oh, I'm just like, I well, knew, I, listen, but, I pressed the button. I can't, I can't figure out what the technology did with it, but. <laughs> no, it's, um. so I put nasturtiums in mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. remember, I'm, I'm trying to get color for fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put nasturtiums in. Um, I'm going to grow dra- snapdragons, but I put them in as seed and I don't know if they're going to make, because they just got pounded so hard because yeah. the, um, the, the, the seeds need light. Yeah. In order to germinate. So we'll have to see. And plus, it's going to get really hot here soon. Mm -hmm. And then um, I did like a wild annual cut flower mix. Mm -hmm. Just something to kind of put out there. Is it too late to do? Like, okay. It said, the package said 30 days to flower. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So... So I have a bunch of um, wild flower mixes and I just figured at this point, you know, you know, 
we're in June and I figured it was too late for me. And so I, I figured the seeds will be fine next year and I'll give it a different whirl. Throw them um, out in the winter time. What's that? Throw them out in the winter time. Oh. In the fall. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like overwintering them? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, it's too much to write down and keep track of. I'm almost done planting. Stop giving me to do's. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just saying. Like I was reading the other day again, mm-hmm. and um, you know, because it's like echinacea, purple cone flower. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to plant that in the fall. Oh my gosh, where's my note? One of my very good girlfriends. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, I don't even remember when I brought it up, but I was probably saying, oh, I was probably telling her that. Um, um, that I wanted to start more flowers. I, you know, I wish I would have started more flowers, yada, yada, yada. It was something along those lines. And she gave me a little riddle to help me. Um, no, that's wrong. I think it came up because I was saying my pepper plants, a lot of them are really small. And I know now that I started them later. Um, and so she told me perennials end by December Annuals in by Valentine's Day and blooms by Mother's Day. That's what I wrote down on my phone. For I think she said Chicago. it like in a singy voice. She typed it in a singy voice. Um, so. Yeah. So that's for Illinois. Oh, yeah. Good Good point. Good point. Yeah. You got to be very clear about that because yeah, yeah, you might have point. somebody somewhere else. Because I was talking to somebody the other day. and um, so Or zone I wanna... six, I imagine, right? You know, so we could. Zone six. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't really break it down by state. It's all zone here. Mm-hmm. There's what? How many zones are in America? Five, Eleven, six, plus seven. the There's A B's. A, that's how many states there are then in the garden world. <laughs> that's exactly it. Uh, we redefined <laughs> it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've redefined the country. <laughs> but um, so one thing that I've noticed and is very powerful is uh, the Instagram community. Mm-hmm. Or just social media communities. If you get into a community with people, you can kind of discuss and talk. You learn a lot mm-hmm, about mm-hmm. this stuff. And um, I actually, there's a company in North Carolina, Kids Seed Company. Mm-hmm. And um, they posted a picture of sweet pea flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, and that picture itself, like, they sold me on growing it. Were so, we talking about this? You know, at this point, I'm just going to say it. So I no. started Sweet Peas and, oh no, it was the mother-daughter duo. That's who I was talking to about it. Um, ah, they were so cute. Uh, and they sent me pictures of the, the garden that they're planting later that day. Anyway, uh, so I have Sweet uh, Pea starters. And what I've read about them is they like, even on the packages, they like it cooler. Yeah. And so I found like I should have had them. Let's stop beating me up about it. I should have had stuff planted in March. I get it. Right. Um, So I have some that were on the side of the house that kind of were just sitting, you know, on the side of the house and they they look green and healthy. It's uber. There's no sun there because, you know, the houses. Well, you don't know, but the houses in, in the city where I live, they're in my neighborhood are really close together. So these are like, you know the uh, um, roofs of the houses are so close together where it shades the sides of the houses. And so the sweet peas that were sitting in, you know, on the side of the house, completely green, they look healthy. The sweet pea starters that were on the back porch. Oh, those things are fried, you know? (laughs) So, um, and remember, I don't have a ton of space that's um, shady, so, I mean, I guess technically you could probably grow them in a shady area. Maybe don't quote me. It could be that they are green and they don't flower. Who knows? So next year, I definitely do want to grow them because they're gorgeous. They do remind me of a Snapdragon, um, but I'm going to commit right here and today to getting them out there when it's uh, cooler. I wonder yeah. if they, how they do in the, fall, in the fall. Well, the thing about them is... Um, just the fragrance. It's one thing that mm-hmm. I'm really missing. I mean, I have I have small amounts of fragrance, but I need an overall fragrance. And I was talking to them about it, and they were like, "We can smell them a hundred yards away." Oh wow! And I was like, "Okay, that's what I need." You know what yeah. I mean? Because fragrance is a big part of it too. I mean, your garden is touch, feel, taste, sight. Yeah. You got one Interact more, with right? All of your sight, your senses. Yeah, all your senses. You can hear so. the birds. There you go. So I'm actually looking up sweet peas um, light right now. 
So or, I mean, I guess it's tip? more of like light or heat, right? So I assume that um, they like it cooler, which means it's, you know, it's getting to the place where it's going to be too hot for them. Um, yeah. I mean, what's the temperature up there right now? That's the weird thing. Uh, we're getting to 80s over the course of like the 10 day forecast. Um, but we've had literally we had 65 as a high 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And in mid June, um, that's pretty cool. So right now it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Hold on. Let me pause you. You mm-hmm. ready for this? Mm-hmm. Sweet peas prefer cool days and nights and will start to fade when temperatures go above 65 degrees. Son of a. <laughs> when so there, there it is go. so that just nixes it out for all of summer that's exactly when i say fried i probably should say they aren't like crispy you know how like when leaves are burned they are exactly yeah. faded like you described so our 10 day forecast real quick um we're gonna get to 80 over the next five days then it dips down to like you know seven high 70s as a high right so again okay. this is especially it's similar to last June in that the temperatures aren't just taking off, but it's different because last June was uber wet for us um, here in, in Illinois um, and specifically in Chicago. So I'm thankful that it's not that. Um, so, yeah. Because you got to think, too, if they're getting some shade, that's keeping them cooler, too. So just because it's 80 doesn't mean it's going to get necessarily. I mean, it depends on what. So like the day, morning sun is cooler than the evening sun. So well, I think the package sun. probably says grow them in, you know, the spring. And, you know, the days are shorter then, too. So not only is the temperature in my area cooler, you know, you're going to yeah. generally get less light, too. And I'm gonna also going to plant morning glories in some areas just to kind of, you know, I have that whole wooded area. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was reading about it. And apparently you can trip if you eat the flowers. So I was like, I haven't heard that. Yeah, that's hallucinogenic. Okay. So I was like, all right. Bonus. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I will not be doing that. That is not my <laughs> cup of tea, but it is, a, it is an interesting fact that yeah. I did not know. So, so I'm going to um, plan a combination of morning and um, moon. What is it? Morning and moonlight? night glories, moon glories, something. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I really yeah. would love to plant those, but I just haven't found a good space that I can kind of let it go wild. Um, so I have packages. I'll, you know, if you like them, I'll probably send them over to you. <laughs> They're a part of the uh, sweet potato family, right? Or sweet potatoes are a part of the morning glory family, I think is the way. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, my hip popped out. So I had that weird look. Yeah. Oh, this my getting gosh. back to running thing is, is brutal. Well, listen, it's I've been doing some extreme gardening. So back to the um, the flower street side garden, there's um, a certain angle that I can get. And boy, I tell you, if my neighbors don't hear me <laughs> when you know that hip goes the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what what else is going on in your garden, though? So just a quick note on um, smell. So I did the the never can die, never can kill it mint that's still popping up in now bed number mm-hmm. 13, remember? Planted mm-hmm. it in one square foot of space three seasons ago. And it's Bad like, move. you know, for those that have watched the Friday the 13th horror special, it's like Jason. Like, you know, it just keeps coming back and coming back. Um, so anywho, I took some mint because I have them in two separate pots now and containers. But I dumped just a sprig of it into um, flower pots that are like right outside of my front door. I have uh, petunias planted there. And um, I thought, oh, it'd be nice if I come out and I can just get a fra- fragrance. And I don't care about it spreading, you know, um, because of, you know, it's this itty bitty pot or whatever. That so, that whole pot will be nothing but mint. No, I doubt it. I'm, tell- I'm we'll telling see. you. We'll see. It takes over. It is insane what mint it's can do. It's definitely invasive. I've, it's taken over yeah. half of a seven by or a yeah, seven by four foot bed. Um, so I've learned the lesson. And, you know. Half I'm, of a seven by four foot bed. And how long? Um, it did that from 
one season it was contained the first season the next season when it came back and I learned that it was perennial it's like oh this is so cool that season it took over the next season it did the same thing so so because you know how it is when you plant them for the first year it sleeps the second year it creeps the creeps, third year yeah. it leaps yeah yeah, yeah. so that the third year boy it was mm-hmm. off to, I mean I'm telling you if you went to I don't know a big park in Chicago and you planted it Within five years, I guarantee you would be almost in every corner. You would find mint somehow, somewhere. It's crazy. I gave some that to uh, my so hairdresser invasive. last year. Sorry. No, you're fine. I gave some to my hairdresser last year. And this year she's like, well, t- let me ask you, what are you doing with your mint? Because not only did it return for her as I expected, um, it's gone. She had it in a pot you know, a container, but it's gone wild. And I'm just like, you know, you're never going to use all of it. Just be okay with that. You know, <laughs> so. Um, I use it all. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Drying it for tea and such. Do you, yeah. you, you told me you had a recommendation for some natural herb um, medicinal. Tinctures. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I make a tincture out mm-hmm. of it. Okay. Wouldn't you like to know? Mm-hmm. I, I assume that one day that's going to be the recipe of the day. No, but okay. we, I, I was actually considering uh doing like a medicinal herb yeah. growing thing but um no we just take a um, mint and we you soak it in vodka um for about six weeks and it makes a tincture and then you strain it out you put it in a bottle and I, i'm telling you if you have like bad gas like your stomach hurts mm-hmm. or cramps man you take a swig now i'm telling you you take a swig of it it's like drinking jet fuel okay it ain't great but it ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? So but it definitely, it works. So as we were, there's another woman there and sh- as she, um, she was Googling like what to do with mint. And I'm sure that that was the recipe that she, uh, cause when she said vodka, I was like, Oh, but then she went on to f- further describe it. I'm like, Oh no, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, if you go on and, and like you want to, um, drink mojitos, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you better just go to the store and go buy some mint to put in there because if you drank enough that you would grow in a year you would be a straight alcoholic and your Terrible. liver would be a brick well, and now think, so. about, think about it when it comes to a single plant again your attention is oh that'd be pretty cool I can go out you can add it some lemonade but then like last year everyone that would come to the house had some work done I, you know would you like the mint you know so last year the mint was like tomatoes this year for me like I'm trying to give it away every day and twice on yeah. Sunday so um, again, lesson learned. Um, I'm, I'm cl- I guess I'll have to replace the, the soil in that bed to really get rid of it because it actually has sprung up on the far end of the bed underneath between the concrete and the actual um, bed. So underneath it, it nice. sprung up. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just yeah, going to let you know. it comes out live. everywhere. Yeah. So what I do is it, it came out of my old bed that I had because, you know, I did the same thing I do now is I have a separate mint bed. Mm-hmm. totally separate but if it comes out the bottom i just chop it mm-hmm. just keep chopping it keep chopping yeah. it, keep chopping it yeah. and then it still would come up but it, it kind of you know stayed under control yeah and you can but, tell when you pull it you can I mean it's just not like pulling a root straight up you can tell um mm-hmm. what are they underground runners you know it's, it's serious yeah. business man <laughs> yeah it's good stuff though yeah, yeah it's yeah. good stuff it's i drink the tea all the time i, I grow um spearmint and peppermint together mm-hmm. and i mix them and then i take a little bit of the lemongrass that i grow and i dry it and i mix that in there so you get like a lemon peppermint oh, or okay. a lemon okay. mint tea you go buy it at the store same mixture Mm -hmm. for four dollars for what is it probably like 24 16 ounces oh 24 bags of tea oh okay 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 i thought you meant like a mixed drink for the price of that i literally each year get two pounds of tea two pounds of tea yeah it takes you forever to drink it so and then not to mention the medicine i get out of it and Mm -hmm, everything else mm so it's pretty cool yeah well, yeah. I also, um, for, well, it was breakfast, really. It was my first meal of the day. I made a garden salad, which has lettuce that hasn't bolted yet. I, st- I have one plant that's bolted. It's done, romaine plant. But I have a couple of other plants that over winter that I'm still slowly but surely eating lettuce from. I added some lettuce, um, some fresh strawberries from my strawberry patch. And the star of the salad was, guess what I've been waiting for for months? 
What? Snow peas. It's good stuff, man. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I would. So I mean, you got. So I, how many did you get? Um, Two or three. I don't know. Like maybe a fifteen or twenty. Maybe no. That's, that's uh, okay. That's so you got a fair amount. Like maybe about fifteen. So you know the trick behind it, though, right? Keep on harvesting. Them. Keep keep on mm-hmm. picking. Keep on picking. Mm-hmm. I just pulled mine out yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, the plants out. aren't getting any higher. So I think again that window of time. Remember, I think I planted them like at some point like mid April. So much later than you suggested. I think you told me to plant them like a month earlier, even. Um, but it's mm-hmm. still nice to literally have my little bowl and to go out and pick a couple of things that are going to go in mm-hmm. my salad, especially so early in the season for me. Um, when I'm not harvesting any, anything else, when everything else is just green and small, it's nice to have a small reward of the, oh no, this is just the beginning girl. <laughs> now you see why I like snow peas yeah, so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. they're the first thing you can get and you get a fair amount of them too. I got my last picking off of them. We got another probably about a pound. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So my total grand total um, that I would have made, you know, if I would have bought them at the store, I think off of two, I think there's seven foot rows, mm-hmm. two seven foot rows. I got $70 worth of peas out of it. How, how close I'm, I was going to ask how many did you, you believe you planted? So seven I foot rows. Two per square foot. Okay. So 14, You can put 28. four per square foot, mm-hmm. but I put two. So, yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of money just off snow peas yeah. itself that I would have spent. And now I have them frozen. We have, we still have a bag in the fridge, um, but we're probably just going to freeze them. And Do then they we'll just stir- eat them throughout. they store well? You buy them at the store, right? I buy raspberries at the store too. Nobody should buy raspberries at the store. That's, a, that's like playing Russian roulette. You never know what you're going to get. Absolutely no, um, not. You mean, yeah. What do you mean store well? Do you mean like in the refrigerator? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, okay. they do good. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't keep them in there forever, but no, yeah, no, they no, do no, good. No, 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 no. I was just thinking that I think I only did like maybe, maybe four or five in two bits along a trellis. So maybe I, maybe 10 plants if you will um so and i my trellis space is limited and i just i've never grown them before um so i was kind of stingy when i planted them um but well, you'll just, start I mean, it's, them. Oh, it's just so freaking cool to get for me remember how late i normally plant for me to get something to harvest in june right you know so the strawberries and the leftover lettuce and uh the, the snow peas um yeah, man, it's cool. Yeah, you'll you'll be getting. I mean, that's the thing is it trickles, and then once it starts, it's like, whoa, you know, like it's just about to start for me. So I have um, my bell peppers are getting ready to be picked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have my jalapenos, not my jalapenos, my chipotle peppers. I'm apparently doing something really good with them this year. Don't know what it is, but I have a bunch that are just about ready to be picked. I have eggplants that are starting to come in. Okay. okay. I have carrots that need to be picked. Um, my wife just got our first husk tomato, or as people like to call them, ground cherries. Uh huh. Uh huh. And she looked like she was pleased. I saw the picture. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a little story behind that. So my son, it's his job to pick them because they're so low to the ground. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, anything real low to the ground, you pick. So he goes to pick them and he's like, here, you try it, mommy. And he's holding it and he sticks it in her mouth with the husk on. So then he goes to take it off. And it was like five minutes of them trying to get it in her mouth. And so it was like, she loved it. But then at the same time, it was like hilarious. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But they're not doing as well as they did last year. Mm-hmm. And it's totally because of my soil. So oh. I'm going to go behind and I'm probably going to pile some compost around it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just kind of, you know hope that works but they're not doing as well but i mean it's still early in the season you know yeah so let me ask you i was actually um i did a couple of different things so the front yard garden has been planted looking at the date just about two weeks now um Mm -hmm. i came back around and added a couple of things but i just put um mulch wood chips on the front yard garden it's so funny because people Mm -hmm. walk past and say 
well, dirt looks kind of dry. And then I'll do the, well, underneath it's not. Uh, anyway, but I cover the beds and it's, you know, it's the free mulch, remember? I have a mulch mm-hmm. guy. And so the backyard garden, one of the beds, and I did this like right at the end of the evening. It was about to get dark. And I said, I'll come back today and plant. So I got my little garbage bag of free mulch and dumped it into the bed. And I came back this morning like, damn, what, happened? what did I put like five inches of mulch here? Like way too much. But anywho, my question is last year I ended up like scraping the mulch, the wood chips aside to try to mend the soil. And I'm wondering, cause I know that you've um, started to mulch this year in this garden. I don't know if you've done it in previous gardens, but like I'm looking for recommendations to not have to like move all of that stuff to the side to add things like compost to the to the bed. Like it's just it's work I don't really want to do. Yeah, I um, I'm not sure quite yet what yeah. I'm gonna do. Probably would say I think I'm gonna end up tilling it in mm. of some sort, and then. I don't know, man, because the thing is, is I don't want that big ass chunky wood in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it'll add drainage for sure. But my my soil, it's that engineered soil and yeah. it's got really good. It's almost got too good a drainage. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we have to water a lot. But I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably just going to move, you know, as much as you can aside. And yeah. I don't think I'd be like, oh, wait, there's one more piece in the middle. Let me get it out. But, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, it is important to amend it. Now, what you can do is what and th- well so this is how i'm gonna do it. let me just tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get a tarp mm-hmm. and i'm gonna lay the tarp on the ground and then i'm gonna take my rake and i'm gonna rake everything onto the tarp probably and just remove it mm-hmm. and then i'm gonna take ch- take some um chicken manure mm-hmm. that we have and this is in the fall and we're gonna bury it underneath and then i'm gonna put it all back on so each one will get another one but i put too much on to start off with yeah and i don't know if i would go with wood chips again Mm, okay. I'm not totally sure that I wouldn't. I'm not. It makes me a little uncomfortable because it's so tough. And I got a lot of um, roly polies in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if they're bad yet or not. I haven't oh, totally so, decided. I don't remember if we talked about this or not. So I'm going to make it really quick. Um, roly polies were attacking my cucumber plants. Mm. So I've seen them over the years. They, they're eating some of the strawberries. So I've put some straw in to, you know, kind of prop the strawberries up. But. I mean, I came out one morning and they were like going to town on them. You'd seen where the leaves have been had been eaten. Um, so I treated it in two ways with some cayenne pepper on one half of the bed. And then I did a combination of uh, soap and just dish soap and water and a few drops of peppermint oil and essential oil and then just sprayed the other half of the bed. So I've not had any problems in that bed. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye. There are roly polies all over my garden, especially in the backyard. That's I mean, a, there's a lot of dampness though. I have a lot of stuff like everything from buckets of rocks to like, it's, it's my, it's my garden hygiene. I think that's drawn them in. Yeah. I mean, the thing is about them though, is that, and if you're using the wood chips, you're going to have mm-hmm. them because they help with decomposition. Mm-hmm. So they feed on it and then they help it decompose. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing yeah. either. So um, I don't I don't really know. I'm kind of on the fence about it and I've been trying to read about it. And, I'm, you know, right now I'm trying to look for like a quick answer, which yeah. there is never. Well, a quick I did answer. what you described, essentially. Um, and I went uber light with mulch last year in the, um, the front yard beds, especially. So it was easy for me to just rake that off. Um, and then I added my compost in. Um, this year, I have some pretty thick mulch layers. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, it's nothing that, to worry about right now, but I was just curious. We'll see in another few months for me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and I think months. it's a good thing because it shows that what you have in there is starting to break down. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so they're feeding on that. Um, you know, well, no, no. Just, I, just to clarify, what I had, I basically removed most of it this season so last season i brushed it to the side at the end of the season added compost 
And then when this season came back around, again, I still got the mocha guys. So I just ended up removing almost all of it. So I had bare soil, which isn't recommended for, for me at least, it's not recommended um, for a couple of weeks. And so I just covered it up. Yeah. So I think um, what I'm going to probably end up doing is um, I'm going to spray some neem oil down mm-hmm. just to be like, don't, for the don't roly come, polies. don't, yeah, don't come near my shit. You know what I mean? Just a little little warning shot. And then if there's an issue, because I was out there today and I was like, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, that that's a lot. Yeah. So um, I don't know if it's an issue. I haven't seen anything, mm-hmm. but I usually try and do a little treatment every once in a while anyways, just to kind of, you know, because sometimes stuff will creep up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll try and I'll probably do something like that. But yeah. um I don't know. I don't. I don't know. The the jury is out on that one. So That's fine. this has been a this has been a like a slowish time for me, mm-hmm. but it's also been a busy time because I know I'm back into like looking stuff up, mm-hmm. and I also have a lot of people on Instagram hit me up with questions, yeah. and I'm trying to answer them. And the problem is, is some of the stuff like it's just like when if I have my own question, I look at I'm like, well, let me double check. So then I'm looking up mm-hmm. their problem, and it all gets kind of muddied in my mind, mm-hmm. but. Um, a lot of a lot of aphid issues right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, and I had I just got rid of my aphids. Okay. So the neem oil, neem Does oil, a trick. and then you do it one time, mm-hmm. and then you come back, and you do it again. Yeah. You have to do it, but I usually do it about three times because you want to kill the eggs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when they hatch, you want to get rid of the eggs. Mm-hmm. So, and that's yeah. the trick with pest control. So you got to get the eggs. Consistency. Or I guess. Consistency. Yeah. I mean, you're not doing it all throughout the season, but you've seen the problem and now you're treating it. Right. Yeah. But we, we did a whole two hour episode on that. So we won't really Mm -hmm. unhash pests again. (laughs) I did have. um, So remember with all the things I started, uh, remember how we said way, 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 way long ago, how we would not purchase plants that we weren't prepared to put in the ground. Yes. So first off, I lied. Um, I totally did that this year. Like the starter plants I mentioned, to, I'm, I'm still getting some of them in the ground. But I brought up, brought it up because of um, some of the things that I actually started indoors, like some zinnias that I started indoors. I mean, there are so many things that were just yellow, you know, they were struggling. And I noticed that once I put them into a flower pot, they perk back up, which is always a good sign, right? Um, but my cucumber plants... Um, we're struggling, like really struggling and they're still struggling. Right. So not only were they attacked by the, um, the roly polies, which I've read, you know, in addition to the conditions, they like younger plants. Um, they are like still pretty yellow, like the leaves are. Um, so I just started kind of my first round of fertilizing, um, with Neptune's harvest. Um, so, I'm, I think I'm going to do like every 15 days or so. Um, so I'm hoping to see some improvements every know, other the next week, couple of weeks, every other week. That's every, every other. Yeah. It's 15 days, right? 14, 15 yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. Every other week. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, um, I don't know, man, you might have a watering issue. You might be overwatering. Mm, maybe there is going to be a drainage issue in that particular bed. That's the newest addition, the newest bed. And it is a bit on the slope. And I just, I didn't attempt to address it when I was putting the bed together. Um, we'll see. I mean, I think that, I don't know. It could be because I'm pausing because I also have some pepper plants in there. Cause remember pepper plants are clearly everywhere. Not my desire, but you got to put them somewhere. Um, and they seem to be okay, you know, still small, yeah. but everything is small. Cause remember the temperatures are, haven't really heated up here. Um, so I think it's, I think it's the cucumber plants, man. I didn't yeah, the, give them the best the, start. So the pepper plants won't take off until it gets hot. Yeah. Yeah. They just don't like it cold. Mm-hmm. So it's but okay. you'll get them. Yeah. It's get, how tall are they? Um, some of them are about, uh, five inches tall. Okay. That's my so they're still pretty five small. inches, but some of them are like two and a half inches. And I know like, um, I wouldn't buy the starter plant at that size. Um, and I have one, like a lemon, a lemon, lemon, some lemon, something lemon pepper. No, not lemon pepper, lemon drop pepper plant. And okay. it's like a hundred days. And so I got the seeds really late. 
Um, and but I said, why not give it a try? And so I don't I don't know what I'm going to end up with. You know, I'll probably yeah. be taking a lot of unripe fruit off of the plant, you know, once we get to the, the first frost date. But yeah, I mean, now, again, Nick- a lot of this is a learning curve for me when it comes to sowing seeds indoors, timing and all. Um, in addition to not sowing as many tomato plants, maybe, maybe not. I'm definitely not going to sow as many pepper plants. Yeah. I know next um, garden update, I'm going to be talking about seeding mm-hmm. again. Indoors. Mm -hmm. Again. Meaning like you're back to seeding indoors. Yeah. Again. In the middle of the garden season. Uh, I'll wait. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you should. (laughs) You should wait. (laughs) Yeah. It's, uh, it's, you know, I don't know, man. It feels weird because it's like summer's just really, like for you, it's just getting started. Mm -hmm. But for me, I don't know, man. I'm like... I got like three or four months left of like good warm weather. So it feels really weird to like already be thinking ahead. I mean, hell, I'm already thinking about next year. Yeah, I'm really trying to bat that away because once June is here, sometimes when I'm planting some things. So I did this trick where, um, oh my gosh, sweet potatoes. Did we talk about this? No, 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 no. No. Forget all of that. I'm sorry. This is the little stick. I just picked up the stick that the... um, that they sent them in. So I have planted my sweet potato slips. Forget everything else I've talked about. Did they perk up? Uh, not yet. But luckily, okay. this is one of those panic buys, remember? You know, all that was happening with COVID. So I had enough sweet potato slips based on the timing. So I waited until I got the ones from that I ordered online to plant the ones that I started indoors. And all in all, I could have used the ones that I started indoors. So I st- I do have backup slips in case the other ones don't perk up, but it's only been like four days, four or five don't days. Don't perk up. Yeah. So I'm telling you, when you get sweet potato slips, they look like shit mm-hmm. when you get them they just did. like pure crap. And a lot of um, farmers, they cut all the leaves off of them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when they put them back. And mine looked exactly yeah. like yours. But the roots and were all... kind of uh, wimpy too. You know, that's yeah, part of the issue. That's because they're they're dehydrated. Mm-hmm, so when you mm-hmm. stick them in the in the water when you first get them, they're mm-hmm. rehydrating. Yeah. And then when you plant them, it takes a couple of days, but you know, maybe a week or so. But yeah. mine mine perked up and they look like normal plants. Okay, so I picked up the stick, uh, the marker basically that they shipped with it, and I was just. Um, going to comment i did a trick of and i've seen this before it's not something i invented you know a lot of people mark their plants you may or may not um so name of the plant short you know abbreviated or whatever the date i planted it which is pretty common and i did something this year which i don't normally do i just put the number of days like expected to harvest because at this point i don't want to start second guessing myself like i can't believe i don't have bell peppers it's like girl it's going to be 75 days get over it right yeah around about um so so yeah i didn't mark the potatoes or the sweet potatoes i should probably make a note of that right now go outside and do that when we get done so i don't mark mine no at all none of them i I don't take notes on any of my vegetables or anything i do it all by sight yeah i just go out and i say you know what is it ready and i'll i'll like with my carrots Mm -hmm. like i have no idea when i planted them because it took them so long to germinate. I have no mm-hmm. clue. So I just kind of dug around and said, oh, it, it doesn't look like the size carrot I'd want to get. It's not thick enough yet. Oh, I don't wait. harvest based on that. That's that's not the, I put the dates on them in an attempt, if I'm ever going to do like um, succession planting. Um, and I do it more so to keep my sanity to say, okay, this plant or this seed has only been in the ground for this many days. So by the time these plants start to get big, you can barely see them anyway. Uh, the, the markers that is, um, so, so yeah, but I, um, again, it's, we're clearly at the point where I'm starting to lose track of what's where, um, but again, remember, this is the year where this is a baseline year of sorts. So I'll decide how much or how little and what different things I want to grow next year. Um, yeah. So. So, yeah, I'm still having fun with it. But I, 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 I don't know at what point I brought it up. I wanted to comment on. So I'm counting July, August, September. Like that's my garden season that's left. October, it's always a toss up as far as when the cold weather is going to come. My last frost date isn't until the 28th or the 29th of October. So, I mean, it's like technically, I guess I could count that month too, but by right. then it's very cool weather. 
not hot weather at all. Um, so I'm trying to push back the feelings of it. Like it's almost over. It just began, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it takes time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes time. But see, once you start getting things going, it just it stays in it. I'm telling you, you got to do a fall garden. Yeah. Because it just extends it by months. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of worried based on what I've thought. I think that I might... You know, if I play it right, I might only get like a, a month or two off during the year for gardening, mm-hmm. you know, which which when I say that, I mean, like parts of it is going to be really slow, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I'll still have to be because, you know, there is a time period where I just need to take a break and go out and just like I don't even need to check on it. Yeah. It's just another structure out there. Yeah. So you've said that before and I've said, no, I want to garden all year long and kind of again, being in this growth period. I wouldn't be, it'd be too much for me if this was like 12 mm-hmm. months out of a year. Um, so I'm okay with the idea of there will be a break. Um, yeah. I mean, I probably would still want, I mean, I guess I do still have a longer growing season. I just didn't use it, you know, so on the front end and the back end of summer. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I've, I'm struggling with, I'm putting in my mind, my fall garden, which we'll talk about in a separate uh, video or in a uh, podcast episode, there are things that can't get planted until July or August. And that's the makings of my fall garden. That's the way I'm looking right. at it. So, Yeah. And, and th- that's okay. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. And that's part mm-hmm. of it too. That's the fun of it though. It's like right when you think you're done, you're starting over. So I look forward to it, but it's, it's just interesting because you feel like you're kind of pushing summer aside mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you've always got to kind of be thinking yeah especially for me because i'm trying to be as productive as possible mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but um yeah so remember i said i planted vincas in my front yard mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they are not getting as big as i thought they would no and they've been in for over a month now so i don't know what's going on i, I shot them some fertilizer yesterday mm-hmm. do you still and, have the um, tag because i think that there is a short variety versus a tall variety this one was supposed to get real bushy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's what I was looking for, but oh, we'll see. Yeah, I thought okay. about going out there and pulling all the flowers off of them again, but I was like, you know what? No, nah, I think they're At too far point, along. Th- yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just not going to really do much. Yeah. And you so, had them in a sunny spot, right? Yeah. It gets seven hours of sun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll see. I Give it some time. I, I mean, you've had plenty hot weather though, so I know it's not that. Yeah, well, you know, and then it was dry, and then it, now it's like overly wet, wet and it's yeah. like, gosh. So, and I'm on yes. a hunt for um, bulbs on sale. So, I'm on a hunt for that. Yeah, because based on your timing, um, I was, I put put this on Instagram, I was at Lowe's, um, you know, Home Improvement Center, and they had a bunch of perennials, which is in part, you know, they helped me get through my oh, I'm going to plant more flowers. Um, But they had a bunch that really um, bloom in the spring. And so I know that it was, again, them trying to get rid of that um, inventory and probably not so many people, especially because we were on lockdown for the most part of the spring. Not that many people probably bought, you know, those flowers. Um, So in part, that's like my version of the clearance we talk about. Um, Right. So I planted... I st- still had some that, that um, um, bloom in the spring and summer or just summer. So I did a mixture of like things that bloom in the spring and summer and then just summer. Um, because for me, it's not as important for me to have things that bloom in the spring unless I have a full like garden in the spring. You know what I'm saying? That's the gift and the curse about the sweet peas, right? So I haven't even thought about where I would plant them, you know, to kind of get that good vibe feeling. Um, Mm -hmm. because there's something about like a flower pot or a big flower bed for me that really kind of makes my garden heart sing. (laughs) Yeah. I, I like, um, I don't know what I like. I I haven't decided yet. (laughs) I haven't decided yet. It's, uh, it's different, but I think I like, um, I like a mixture. Yeah. You know, I think it's a good balance. You know, I'm not really big in putting vegetables into pots Mm -hmm. because the, um, the stakes are too high for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, if I lose, like, if, you know, if I put an eggplant there and it burns up, then I lost everything. But if I lose a flower, like, I can go get another flower and yeah. put in it. Yeah. And I can still get something out of it. But so far, I mean, you know, 
I did my flower pots this year because I had found a bunch that I had buried in my shed when I cleaned it out. Mm -hmm. And they're good, but they're wearing me out because I got to water them every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They dry out every single Mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So, and proven winners, super tunias are too productive. They get huge, right? Yeah, they're overtaking my pot and mm-hmm. I'm having to like slash them back. So yeah. I don't think I would do super tunias again unless it was like just them in a pot. Yeah, because they're I think so they're just pretty, but they're too big. It's exactly what you described. It's um because they get bushy like you want the vincas to do. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, you don't even want that for the vincas. Um, yes, I do. Oh, do you? You yes, want it to be that bushy? Yes, uh-huh. I do. Okay. Yeah, because what I want to do is I wanted them to get bushy so they would shade everything out and then give mm-hmm. me a good base for next year. Mm-hmm. That was my goal. Okay. But I don't know if it's going to work out that way. Uh, so sunflower <laughs> we'll update. Um, I have a bunch of sunflower seeds because I, you know, I'm going to have to convince someone else to let me plant sunflowers in their space. Um, but remember my challenge with the squirrels last year, and I'm not going to feed squirrels, uh-huh. get over it. I don't want to hear the suggestion again. Not going to do it. Um, but I did start, which were hard. I've read and seen videos of some flowers prefer to be direct sowed. Um, but based on my timing and how it's still, we're still getting 60 degree weather. I started some sunflower, dwarf sunflowers indoors and like every third one germinated. But that still gave me enough to sprinkle some sunflowers in my front yard garden. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think they're going to get like two feet tall or something. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Do you know where, seeing... where I plant, where I got my sunflower seeds from? From sunflowers. From my bird food. Really? I just planted, my, I planted the black oil sunflower seeds and I have them everywhere. Oh, they're that's coming so up cool. Like all under the bird feeder, mm-hmm. just everywhere they're coming up. Mm-hmm. So, oh, and they're so not... Cool. I, I don't know how big they're going to get. Like some of them are actually getting chewed up by pests right now. I've got to oh. go out there if it ever stops raining and treat them, you know, because they're six feet tall at this point. Mm-hmm. So, but the, the, the heads of them are, you know, they're not very big mm-hmm. right now. I don't know if like the first ones are smaller and they get bigger. There's so know, many different varieties. Like there, there are millions, are. it feels like varieties of sunflowers. And there's no telling what came in this bag all i know is they were black sunflowers it's like sunflower surprise yeah yeah and they're just popping up everywhere because i had like a big mess and then i had a bag sitting on my back porch which you should never do because mm. i had a possum eating out of it every mm. night and then he just spread them everywhere yeah so um, i actually saw some of the sunflower seeds that the squirrels had eaten last year in the bed when i was working it up this year but they were cracked they weren't whole so it, it would have been nice if i had some that you know kind of um you know sow themselves what's the term for that not sow themselves um like volunteers yeah, volunteers. Yeah, um, so I didn't see any, but that would have been cool. Um, we'll see. I'm still on the quest to. There's um, it's probably about 20 minutes from my house. There's like a field of sunflowers, which I have to go to this week. I had it. Yeah, it's my calendar. Because um, last year when I found out about it, they had already started to droop and kind of dry out. But I really want to take a look at them, like when they're in full bloom, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would grow. I tried last year. And I mean, the problem was I didn't water what I put in the ground, Mm -hmm. but I tried to grow like cut sunflowers, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I would ever do like a mammoth sunflower, like the big, huge ones. I don't know if I would ever do that. I think it would be too much, um, you know, staking it up and everything. I want it to be, I feel like a sunflower should be a low maintenance plant that you kind of enjoy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. I would totally do it. And I may or may not have a bunch of mammoth flower seeds. Like I... I love them so much. Last year, I went overboard when I was like hoarding seeds. Um, So I'll have to figure something out. And that's another thing I can probably donate because I have far. I'm never like instead of growing vegetables in the front yard, I could have just grown a bunch of sunflowers. Like I could have done that. I wouldn't have done that, but I could have done that. Like that's how much many I really want to grow. Um, But that's not going to happen. Oh, so, so I went to Lowe's the other day. And they had hanging pots of petunias um, for five bucks. Really? So I bought them. Um, I bought one. I need to buy another one. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I'm buying them? I don't. Oh, for it. Take so you a can wild the seeds. guess. No, so I can have a damn hanging pot oh. for five bucks. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so I think they're give- like min like the low price is like ten dollars here. That's why my face frowned up like five bucks. They're on sale. Okay, I did see some sale. dead petunias and hanging pots for like five bucks on clearance. Um, yeah, and f- for whatever reason, I felt like I got a really great price discounted plant this year from Lowe's, but. I've um I've asked a couple of times and they're just like you know they have them on consignment they can't discount them and so it's not even worth the five bucks for me because I have so many like of those pots because I've historically bought them over the years. Um, yeah, see, I've never bought them, and yeah. I was like, I need to get a hang up because I have like a shepherd so I can have like three bird feeders hanging mm-hmm. off of it, and I was like, Nah, cut it out, <laughs> you know. So I've got it, and I put um, I put a. Uh, a hanging pot on there and it, it, it actually filled the spot that okay. I needed to. It looked, it looked good. Yeah. You know, it just gave, kind of gave that color. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. I don't have like, I don't have like a color theme going on mm-hmm. necessarily. It's just like blah, here's color. Yeah. So, and I'm, I like that though. I like, it feels wild. You know what I mean? Did the, we already released the episode about designing a garden, right? Well, by the time this comes out, it'll be out. Okay. So I thought about that episode as I was planting the flowers in the front yard flower bed um, because we talked about this piece with the regular vegetable garden. Plant- no, wait. This episode is, comes out this week. So hey, go ahead. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, so a part of what. And it may not have even been this episode now that I think about it. Part of the, um, the struggle that I had identified was I don't typically plant vegetables in a vegetable garden mid-season, meaning I'm not planting around things, right? So if there is, you know, I'm starting the season, bed number 11, bed number 12, like they were clean slates so I can plant everything at the same time. Now you transition over to the flower bed. And I had that struggle of trying to adjust my design, with Mm -hmm. a bunch of things that are already there you know so Mm -hmm. now i'm imagining all right i have the tag that says this is the height i'm imagining the colors you know i can see some things have bloomed already it was a whole that's the reason why i was sitting on the milk crate and and passers-by where you know checking you know my welfare you know like it was it wasn't as easy as it has been historically for me I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. I did move a couple of perennials, which is something I don't normally do either. So Yeah, so one of the perennials I moved over the winter is it's on its way out. I don't know oh, why. Oh yeah. I think it might just need like total shade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I bought it, it said part shade. So So my top three makes- favorite um flowers. By the way, Snapdragons are a favorite, but not a top. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. so hibiscus, um, and I have spent my current garden season hibiscus budget already. And so I picked the, um, the plant up and I, add, I walked away, but there was a guy that asked if I needed help. And I'm like, oh no, I'm okay. Then I walked back like the tag said, I'm pretty sure it said part sun slash full sun. So I had to ask them like, just, is this one of those it's tagged part sun slash full sun, but it really wants part sun because I'm going to be devastated if it doesn't. He's like, no, no, I'd prefer it'll bloom much more often if it has full sun. I'm like, okay, I'm going to hold you to that. You know, yeah. because right now they're doing all of that split tagging and things like, what does it really want? You know, my begonia story. Yeah. Don't you yeah, the ones believe that I put in, the, <laughs> They're doing pretty good. They get a couple hours of sun, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they're doing pretty good. They don't look burn or anything. Yeah. Good. So, that was the yeah, sun variety um, of the begonias, right? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. They're asking me something crazy. <laughs> so I had to replace some herbs in my herb garden too. Mm-hmm. Um, and the only reason why I went out and I usually don't go out and buy herbs like potted, but I hope nobody's listening to this, but that's what we're doing for Christmas this year. Oh, okay. Is we're making seasoning packets. Uh-huh. So I was like, I was like, Shh, I got a big family, man. I was yeah. like, we got to have some serious herbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got um, two sage plants. Uh, and actually, so it was a bonus. We have two sage plants and I have two basil plants. Mm-hmm. And I had seeded a bunch. And when I was putting in the sage, I was like, this little tiny seedling looks familiar. And I was looking at it, looking at it. And I was like, man, I don't think that's a weed. So I pulled it up. Sure enough, it was little basils. Oh, 
So I just moved them over to the sides, you know, because why not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, and then we have a couple dills and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So and then we have chamomiles for teas and stuff. So yeah, um, I'm going to direct so my deal. I've had luck with it before. Actually, yeah. I had some deal return this year. Yeah, yeah, you'll do that'll do mm-hmm. that. And cuz I have cilantro is something I've mine's going to seed. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to let it go to seed and it should come back. Self-seeding you know, was the term I was looking for, which leads yeah, to volunteers, yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know. But um it'll it'll grow back and you know, if it doesn't I still have seeds that I can put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll probably continue to sit. But the problem is is that bed and it all comes down to watering. Like it's not in a spot where I would normally water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I just have to be better about that. Yeah. Are you is that a spot you need to hand water or is that a spot where you can put the sprinkler? I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Because fine. it makes me look really bad. Because it's literally right next to my rain barrel. <laughs> this is a no judgment zone. Yeah, well, I hope not because I just got judged by it. Yeah, but those eyes, the eyes I just gave you, they were a little bit judgy. Uh, (laughs) They were rough. So, all right. You know what time it is? I smell it. It's. it's Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. Can you hear the sizzle? Mm -hmm. Not today you don't. There will be no sizzle. It's time for the recipe of the day. Featuring me. (laughs) Okay. So there was sizzle, but there's not going to be sizzle when you make this recipe. Okay. I am going to give you a sweet, sweet, sweet summer treat. Popsicles. (gasps) Yay! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Who doesn't like popsicles? I mean, seriously. I have two popsicles. hands raised. I do. I do. <laughs> and even better, watermelon popsicles. I knew you were going there. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. And even better, mint watermelon popsicles. Oh. oh. So You're spicing it up. Mint. Yeah. It's super invasive. You can't keep up with mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your watermelon and you're going to cut it open mm-hmm. and you're going to get all the red out of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you stick it in a blender. You put some um, mint. Hopefully you're growing it. If not, you can you can bypass the mint. It doesn't really I'll matter. I'll send you some if you're not because, I mean, clearly. <laughs> yeah, Batavia's got plenty. So, um, But you just take some of the mint leaves and you put it in the blender. And if you want it even sweeter, you can put honey in. Mm-hmm. Or if you're vegan and you don't, and if you're a vegan that doesn't eat honey, you can put agave nectar in Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you can do that and then it will uh, just blend it up. And then most people think you need a popsicle holder, right? Well, we don't need popsicle holders necessarily. It definitely makes it easier if you have a popsicle holder. But what you do is you take and you, you can use ice cube trays and fill it up and you can stick toothpicks in if you want. You can stick popsicle sticks. You can get them. But if you use the um, ice trays, s- put a piece of saran wrap over it mm-hmm. and lock it in tight and then put th- um, the toothpicks through so they'll stick straight up. Okay? Okay. And your camera just went out, Batavia. I know. Go ahead. I'm listening. And then so what will happen is... It'll freeze, you take it out, and you enjoy it. And you can really intermix this with any fruit you want, any combination. Like, don't let it get you to where it's like, all I can do is watermelon. You can use peaches, plums, oranges, like go crazy. Well, not oranges because they're not really in season. But um, watermelon, mint, honey, popsicle, enjoy it. Enjoy your summer. And if you're growing your watermelon... It's even better. <laughs> How was that? That's perfect. Good. The I have one watermelon hot, plant that I'm hoping that I'll be able to get to harvest and uh Batavia. Get some watermelon. You have no camera. That's okay. I can still talk. No, I I can't see you though. I know, but you know what I look like. <laughs> but YouTube doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I had but. to change the battery. Ah, uh, check, check, yeah. check. So, anyways, um, yeah, there's, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's not a whole lot going in in my garden right now, but maybe for you there is. 
seems like you have a lot more because you're in the phase I was like a couple weeks ago. You as in me, as in yeah, Tavia? Yeah, you. Yeah, can you see yeah, me now? I'm talking to you. Yeah, I can see you. Okay. You're back. Um, so, yeah, like, it's come to fruition. Like, I know that probably yeah. should be the harvest, but, you know, I feel like right now I'm almost in the cleanup space. Like, I'm transitioning from planting because, again, I only have one bed that I want to get planted, one more bed that I want to get planted this week. And then it's going to just be an easier way for me, you know, as far as maintenance goes. Um, mm-hmm. And then obviously I'll get into planting the fall garden because I am committing to that. I do want to get to the point of having some veggies that are going to be harvested much closer to the fall and cooler weather. Um, so, so yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to let like go of the step. idea of like it's mid June and I'm yeah. still planting like, cause it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, it's starting. Yeah, I mean, things are starting to perk up. Dude, it's mid June and I'm still planting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then it's going to be August and I'm going to be planting mm-hmm. and it's going to be in July and I'm going to be planting seeds. Here, so here. It, it doesn't stop, you know, and that's yeah. the, that's the thing of it. Like you wait all winter to get to this point. Mm-hmm. So it's like, do it. You know what I mean? And that's why I like went out and I was like, I'm going to start a flower garden right here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, so there's a whole space next to it and it will grow from then on. But I want to do like self seeding. Mm-hmm. So I want a little bit more low maintenance. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. So that being said, I have a really bad thunderstorm coming my way. Okay. So I don't want to get shocked. Yeah. 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 Be safe, brother. <laughs> Fry all this stuff. But, yeah. um, everybody keep it real. And um, do you have anything to tell everybody, Batavia? Tell them something. I just want to tell you, if you haven't started a garden, do it. Do it now. If you're starting a garden, please do share us with us how it's going. You can hit us up on various social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I just say, I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the 5,000 people that have listened. Send us one of your friends share with everybody let's be happy learn to grow grow for change and until next time dig a hole see you we'll catch you guys later (laughs) i hope you enjoyed our conversation today you can find us at backyard gardens the movie on facebook and backyard gardener on instagram and youtube is backyard gardener where i'm doing videos showing cooking and building gardens and gardening tips all kinds of good stuff and you can find batavia at You'll find me on Instagram at B underscore Better Garden. And then you'll find me on Facebook, same name. And then I'm also over on YouTube at B Better Garden. I am sharing hashtag Garden Joy every chance I get. I hope you enjoy. So if you have any questions, hit us up on all of our platforms anywhere you want. And we will be more than happy to help you with what you can. And again, thanks for listening. And we will see you guys next time. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.